Hello everyone, Charles Waller for back again. And I say again, from before a long time, um, I have been out of the game making videos for a while. If you're familiar with me, I have a lot of videos to watch, so in the meantime, I hope you watch those. But if you haven't or you're new to me, go back and watch some of my older videos. I have quite a lot, quite a few uh, to enjoy. Uh, I haven't shot one of these in a while, and I wanted to go over this. This is my, as you see in the title, my Whiskey and Spirits collection. I have a collection, or I, but I, I don't know if I would call my collector a, myself a collector yet. Because a true collector never has one bottle. I'm an enthusiast. There are some uh, alcohol you will see here, some uh, spirits you will see that have not been opened yet and I actually at this point may never open and I might have it just for collecting purposes but without further ado let's get started also I'm going to sit down not because I'm lazy because I found that it's actually easier for the camera to pick up me sitting so I'm going to be sitting for right now let's go ahead and open it up by the way, I bought this uh, display case in Ikea. So if you want a cheap way to display your, um, an inexpensive way to display your uh, spirits, this is a really good way to display your spirits. And it won't be as expensive as buying a um, nice, heavy, wooden um, liquor cabinet. So, first of all, we're going to go on the first level is mostly bourbons. Bourbon or bourbon whiskey, there is a difference. Um, and there's some that are not Kentucky straight bourbons. They're just, by the definition, the actual law, by law, are called bourbons. And you have some things called blended whiskey or blended bourbons and stuff like that. We'll go over that. I want to go over some that... Uh, that I like a lot. I'm not going to go over everything in here because the video will be way too long. Way too long. All right, Booker's. Uh, this Booker's bourbon I've had for quite a while now. I need to finish up, but this is a really good one. I enjoy it. It's uh, it's one of the classics. If if you really like uh, bourbon. Booker's is the way to, is, is a good one to have and to know what bourbon should taste like, especially when you start going up in price. This is not cheap. This is not cheap. I don't know how much this costs right now because the price is for, for alcohol currently in 2022 because of so many things that's happened in the world. This could be 50 bucks. This could be 150. I don't know these days. But we're not, we're not going to go on price too much. Same kind of deal. E.H. Uh, Taylor. Colonel E.H. Taylor. This is a really good one too. Um, I've had for a while. I, I don't drink bourbon like I used to. I've slowed down quite a bit. Um, I love bourbon, but I just, I've slowed down quite a bit. Um, Old Forrester. This is the Statesman. I did a um, pretty cool, I've done videos with all the all the uh, bourbons that I'm going to men I've mentioned or about to mention uh, with a cigar cigar pairing, check that out. Old Forester, really pretty good. Statesman though, this is the Statesman from the movie uh, The Kingsman, the sequel to The Kingsman. Then we go to some pretty interesting. Well, no, I would I use I'll go over those later. Let's go over this next section. Here, Buffalo Trace. Gotta have Buffalo Trace. This is a good beginner's bourbon. I, people who were drinking other distilled A spirits like cognac and stuff like that, I, I got them onto bur, uh, Buffalo Trace and bourbon. I mean, got them on bourbon with Buffalo Trace. This is a local. Uh, whiskey. This is a this is a Maryland whiskey company bourbon. This is a Maryland whiskey company bourbon. It's okay. It's okay. Not bad. Not the best. 
Um, one I like, which is used to be local, which is not local anymore. This is called the Murray Hill Club. Murray Hill Club is a bourbon whiskey, so it's blended. It is not a Kentucky straight bourbon. This is a blended whiskey. Really good though, really good. And then it, it is the sister to that, one of my favorite bourbons of all time, Joseph A. Magnus. This is a, a straight bourbon whiskey. Not a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, but a straight bourbon whiskey. Then, not open, this is Larceny, which is not open, not because I'm saving it for uh, collecting purposes. I just haven't got around to having some. Larceny, as far as inexpensive bourbon, this is the way to go. Larceny is the way to go for your inexpensive bourbon. All right, I'm going to skip over one, and I'm going to go to some collecting. Uh, Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare shouldn't be something you collect. But because bourbon and Buffalo Trace products have gotten so crazy, I don't want to open it and I don't want to drink it. I don't want to open it and I don't want to drink it because the price for this has gone crazy. This is not a special edition. This is not anything that has a limit, limited edition collecting type deal. It just is. It just is more expensive than it used to be almost every year. I remember I saw this in the stores in Pennsylvania for $35. $35. This is not even $65 anymore. Almost anywhere. So, yeah. So that's why I haven't drank this yet. This is one of my favorite bourbons also. It's a weeded, weeded uh, bourbon, which is usually takes a lot of a bite because it doesn't have a rye. It takes a lot of a bite away, a little bit smoother. Um, like the... Larceny is a good alternative to having a good weeded bourbon. This is probably the best weeded bourbon. And then another one, Kentucky Owl. Now, this is a really good example of like, I'm just buying it for collecting purposes. I have no idea what this tastes like. Everything else I've had before, even though, um, like the other ones that haven't opened yet or other ones you're going to see that I haven't opened yet. I've never had this before, so I guess that is real uh, collecting at that point. And I don't have a reason to try this or open this yet. The Kentucky Owl. This is the Confiscated. There's the different types of Kentucky Owl. This is the Confiscated. And then lastly, with, again... Buffalo Trace products run amok. As you can see with the little, well, let me get a little bit closer. You know what this is. Blanton's. Blanton's has gone absolutely nuts for how much you can get Blanton's for if you can get it. If you can get it. Blanton's is off the chain has the price of Blanton's. If I could buy a case of this, I probably could trade this like on the stock market. I mean, some people do stuff like that. They buy alcohol, they really buy alcohol for collecting purposes for invest investments. I don't know if I went that far, but I know Blanton's is so hard to find these days and the asking price can be almost anything for basic Blanton's. Again, this is not like the Eagle Rare. This is not a special edition, but the cost of Blanton has gone so crazy and run amok so bad. I don't have this. I don't, I don't have no desire to drink it right now or maybe ever. All right, next up are some rums uh, from different places. So the first one I want to show you is the, probably the coolest bottle I have here. That is a cool bottle, isn't it? And that's some dark rum. That is some dark rum. This is the Macombo. Macombo 20 year. 
This is some good stuff. This is probably the best rum I've I have right now. Easily. Easily the best rum I have right now. I don't even remember where I got this rum. Maybe Total Wine, I think. Now the best, well the, the, the uh, entry, the entry drug, I guess. What do you call that? What do they call marijuana? Uh, entry? Something like that. The gateway. The gateway drug for rum that got me drinking rum is this Ron Zacapa XO. This Ron Zacapa XO is uh, it's some of the best distilled A spirits I've ever had. Some of the best distilled A spirits I've ever, ever, ever had. Um, coming up was probably very close to some of the top rums I've had. Esquisito. This is actually a Bacardi rum. And um, this is uh, surprisingly really, really good. And if you don't know much about rum, rum is the least expensive eight spirit you can get. And you can get some high quality alcohol and some high quality flavors with aged rum. All right, and I'm gonna go too deep. One last one, I did a video on this, a couple, two videos on this. This is the Gosling Old Rum. I just like the way it looks. It looks really nice. It looks really nice. Um, I have quite a bit left in here, but it definitely has been open. Uh, I do highly recommend this one for just the look. The look. It looks better than it tastes. It's good, but it looks better than it tastes. But it does look good, doesn't it? So for the most part, I keep my tequila on top because I start running out of space. <laughs> and I don't have that much tequila, but the tequila I have is really good. So first, I want to go over some a hidden gem. Or maybe, yeah, it's a hidden gem. I will tell you it's a hidden gem. This is my most expensive tequila I have. This company makes very, very, very cheap, crappy tequila. However, <laughs> this particular one, this extra in Yeho, the extra in Yeho is like, like, why do you guys make crappy te tequila and then make this? And they don't make the bottle any different. Like, you, no one would know this is the most expensive alcohol I have in here. You're going to see some really good bottles. You've seen some already some really nice ornate bottles. This and then the labels coming off. But this is actually my most expensive tequila in here. It's actually the best. This is actually the best. It's weird. But the, all these are extra in Yehos. Not in Yeho. No, not Raposado. Raposado. But extra in Yeho. Oh, wait a minute. I do have an extra in Yeho. This is the Patron extra in Yeho. This is a special one that was made for my local uh, liquor store. And it got me to buy it. I won't buy this again. Not because this is very good for what it is. I don't like in Yeho's. I like extra in Yeho's. It needs to be extra in Yeho. But we want to talk about beautiful, some beautiful uh, presentations, beautiful looks. Take a look at this one. Take a look at this, this Avion 44. Beautiful presentation. This, you, 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 to just have a bottle on display is not enough. You got to have the whole box and it just looks so nice. It looks really nice. Look at that. Look at that. Another great presentation. This 18, 1800 Mil Milanio. Am I saying that right, Milanio? I hope so. 1800 Milanio. This box is really nice, and look how it opens up. It opens up really cool. It's really nice. Beautiful, beautiful presentation. Beautiful presentation. But then, Don Julio. Don Julio, 1942.
this is probably the least. This is. I don't want to call it the worst because it's really good, but as far as the añejo, the extra añejos, this is probably. I, I think technically they call this an añejo. This is not. This is not. Look at the presentation. This is this is an extra añejo. But this is probably the, my least favorite. There we go. My least favorite. This is a good one. This is a real good one. All right. That is it for that first cabinet. Let's go to the second cabinet. 